good morning everyone um sorry we are late but uh, let's wait for a few moments while uh, other attendees join and then we can start the talk So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Vivek Kilani. Um, I'm a manager of research program and analytics at uh, Digital Supply Chain Institute. Uh, Digital Supply Chain Institute is a part of uh, Center for Global Enterprise, a New York based nonprofit organization uh, working on global management, uh, applied management practices. Um, what um, during this expert connection is what we are trying to do is trying to explain the digital supply chain. Um, and that's how I, uh, Center for Global Enterprise has developed, um, put together an institute where, which works on different uh, applied research topics and proof of value, uh, proof of value projects for different companies um, around the world. Um, this session are short, uh, 15 minute short um, question, but they are full, uh, uh, full with information um, uh, that can really help you uh, gain some of the skills and uh, help you understand what business are required uh, uh, in terms of digital supply chain transformation. We hope to have a little time for Q&A uh, at the end, but if we don't, uh, please feel free to reach out to us at any time and we are happy to have a detailed conversation about any of, the, uh, any of your questions. So today's session is our fourth session uh, in the series, which is about DSC technology uh, enablers. Um, uh, during today's session, we'll talk about technology evolution and the digital supply chain. Uh, we'll talk briefly about a 3D printing example and then we'll briefly jump into the DSCI blockchain value framework, and then we'll set the stage for the next uh, and the final um, session of the Expert Connect series. So those of who are new um, um, uh, or, or joining uh, uh, today for the first time, uh, during the first session uh, of the series, we talked about the digital supply chain. And at DSCI, working with the global supply chain leaders, so we came up with four categories under digital supply chain. And those four categories are demand, people, technology, and risk. Um, over the last two weeks, we talked about demand and people, and we talked about different examples on how to stimulate demand, but also how to gain some of the, um, uh, how to do cultural shift, but also how to gain some of the skills needed to do digital supply chain transformation. So today we'll talk about managing technology. So let's quickly talk about technology evolution and digital supply chain. So SAP was um, a, a member of digital supply chain, and Hans was a great partner at that. And, and this, uh, this is a quick quote from France, uh, to win in the digital economy, we have to reimagine re how we design, play, uh, make, uh, make deliver, and operate our products and assets. And to all of these things, I think technology um, is a critical part of that and critical function um, uh, to achieve, the, uh, achieve these objectives. And technology is the building block to eliminate friction and increase customer centricity. Because um, if you remember, digital supply chain is all about customer centric platform model. Um, it also helps to optimize human and automated workflow, workflows and gains. And uh, we talked about one of the examples where uh, one of the members uh, of DSCI is trying um, to measure um, order fulfillment without any human interaction. And that they are now at 80% of the accuracy. So how to achieve that, I think technology can, uh, can really help um, uh, in that aspect and to achieve that KPI. And the third one is to enable uh, confident data-driven decision-making. I think uh, up to now, uh, traditional supply chain was always focused on in intuition-based decision-making, but now companies are trying to use the data they have, which is really powerful, but up to now, they, they weren't using it um, uh, to its full extent. Uh, so I think using it, um, perfectly and, and getting the insight out of it. Uh, um, uh, I think technology can be really helpful. So initially, the uh, if you look at the opportunity versus value chart, uh, cloud, um, cloud and mobility services actually came to provide uh, speed in execution in accessing the data uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the enterprise because most of the uh, enterprise before were siloed and now they are trying to access the data um, and they're trying to put uh, uh, all the data sources and connecting it through cloud. So it's easy to access data between different functions. Next is automation and IoT. 
so trying to get new data sources uh, from delivery side uh, if you're if you're a logistic company or trying to provide logistic information to your customer iot can be really helpful and also helpful um, into your manufacturing process as well so it's a sensor driven um, and automated process and next is blockchain and we'll talk more um, uh, in detail about blockchain but blockchain is really helpful in collaborating with your supplier and customers and even between your uh, function um, if you are trying to share the data and trying to put together a record of something uh, that can really um, give you an insight on uh, on the delivery side or um, also on the uh, on the functionality side and the next is ai and ml so ai and ml can really help you uh, improve your demand forecast and other functionality um, it can also uh, help you um, in your product development side as well. So we'll talk more about that. So if you read the front side flip before, um, we talked about uh, some of the game changers. So if you look at the real time big data analytics, mobile sensors, IoT, and social media data are really game changing, game changing data sources that can that can help companies uh, um, improve their uh, KPIs in terms of uh, demand forecasting, inventory levels, or inventory overflow. Um, next is digital impact on manufacturing delivery. So uh, that's where AI and robotics, 3D printing, drones and driverless vehicles uh, can, can be really useful. And when we wrote the paper uh, back in 2016, blockchain was still at a hype mode, uh, but it was still a game changing technology that can really help supply chain. At the time, people were only talking about blockchain in financial services, but at the time DSC, I think that um, the value that blockchain uh, provides can be really useful in supply chain in terms of tracking and getting visibility um, and sharing data, different different uh, um, suppliers and customers. So let me give you a quick example on, uh, on 3D printing. Um, so Andre Armour is uh, one of the member um, of the Institute and also uh, the Chief Operating Officer of the uh, Under Armour is a co-chair of, of the Institute. Um, so right now Under Armour is um, developing their shoes using 3D printing technology. Um, so they have different, um, the whole shoe is not the 3D printed, but some part uh, of the shoe is 3D printed. For some shoes it's a heel, is 3D printed late I feel for some is midsole and some is outsole. And how and why they are doing it. So let me give you an example on how they are co connecting uh, different dots between the product development, 3D printing, and the different mobile uh, applications. So here, um, uh, this is the um, Under Armour Hover shoes, which is a connected shoes, which has a sensor which sends data to, to their mobile application, which is Map My Run. And they also collect data through different Galaxy or Apple um, Apple Watch or any kind of connected device uh, that record your fitness data. By using and collecting all the data they have, they use it in their Under Armour Lighthouse uh, where they are trying to develop different uh, um, 3D printed structure for their shoes. While they do that, they also uh, uh, do different testing on it, try to collect user uh, data on that trying to collect social media data on that and that reaction and put it back to uh, back to the app and back to the, the development team. So overall, it, it, it's a circular design where they're really trying to use 3D printing technology to reduce the friction between consumer, um, consumer feedback um, uh, and the delivery of a product and trying to make that product as much as um, excellent in terms of uh, um, Under Armour's motto is all about delivering performance uh, in health, um, uh, health and fitness. So um, uh, I think trying to achieve that uh, object by using 3D printing technology while also using um, the Map My Run uh, to collect different data, uh, that's really great. And let's um, quickly talk about blockchain. Um, so uh, as, as I talked earlier, um, in 2017, blockchain was um, really at the hype. Uh, uh, it was all about Bitcoin height. Uh, uh, people were trying to sell blockchain as a solution. But in 2019, uh, it's trying to find its right place. And in 2020, I think companies are not looking at the right solution, but it's a part of a solution. And at DHCI, we have um, discovered that we have done many uh, proof of value projects with different companies um, around the world in different areas. And I'll share one of the examples as well. And trying to, uh, right now, blockchain is emerging as a blockchain as a service and also blockchain as a microservices because you can't sell blockchain or you can't implement blockchain on it itself because it's too expensive and the value it brings is not that useful 
unless you identify a particular use case uh, or particular value case. So how, uh, how to think about when um, uh, you think about enterprise blockchain. So uh, enterprise blockchain enables cross enterprise transformation when single ledger is impractical or not trusted. So when multiple parties involved within supply chain and supply chain has multiple parties involved, I think it's the best case to use a uh, blockchain where transaction entered by multiple parties in fact. Um, so if you have order coming from your suppliers and you are delivering some of the product to your customer, I think it, uh, that's where you can really use a blockchain. And at DSA, we do not believe in proof of concept. Um, um, we believe in proof of value because as a technology, blockchain really works. And the framework of blockchain really works, but um, the problem that companies are facing right now, while uh, we have talked to many companies, um, hundred, hundreds of enterprises around the world, and the main problem they have is identifying a right solution, um, a right problem uh, uh, where blockchain can really help you, right? Um, so I think one of the skills that you, you want to think about is how to apply a blockchain to a particular problem and not just think about, um, I have a blockchain, so where should I put it, right? So think about the business problem that can really solve and that can increase value uh, or increase revenue because in digital supply chain, it's all about increasing revenue. So how it can increase your revenue um, or decrease cost uh, um, while using blockchain. So let me share you a quick framework that um, uh, we use at DSCI. Um, uh, and it's a three-part problem. So the first solution, um, first uh, tool is around BFI. We call it Blockchain Fitness Index. So we developed this interactive tool to allow, um, allow enterprise to quickly assess an applic uh, applicability of a blockchain solution to a particular use case that they are trying to use, right? So uh, as I told earlier, companies are uh, really struggling to identify a, a business problem that can be really helpful and creating value. So this tool can really help them identify if it's really um, helpful in, in terms of creating value or not. Um, so if you go through um, uh, go through the assessment um, and you evaluate, you'll go you'll get a score between one to fifteen. So if your score is more than twelve. Um, that biz, uh, business problem is really uh, can use blockchain right now. And the second is performance and gap analysis. So what we do once we identify that um, um, blockchain can really be useful, then we select to identify different um, importance of the uh, of the proof of value, uh, then identify current metrics that can be uh, that can be improved, assess current performance, and establish target performance. And then we do the gap analysis, uh, and then we share that with the enterprise. And the third is we create a business case afterwards. Um, in evaluation of the proof of value. And after that only, uh, we try to do a proof of value uh, with any uh, any blockchain company. So those of you who are really interested in blockchain, we have uh, uh, wrote some, some interesting papers uh, that can really um, help you understand um, different aspects uh, of blockchain and how it can be applicable to uh, different business problems. So please feel free to go to our uh, DSCI website and download it. Um, I'll, share, uh, I'll give you a quick, um, a quick example. So we worked with a company called Alicent. Um, uh, that was our first blockchain proof of value uh, project. And by doing this, um, uh, a study in blockchain enabled secure uh, DevOps, uh, the, uh, we improved cycle time um, by 34%. We increased their pro productivity by 29% and improved quality of their product by 11%. So unless you identify a real use case, um, you can't get this kind of uh, improvement in your KPI. So going through the BFI, going through the BRI, I think can really help. And after that, you should invest, um, but before that, you should not invest in blockchain solution. Um, I think we are already at 15 uh, minute marks, but if anybody has any questions before we uh, close the call, feel free to raise a hand. Um, and I'm happy to answer any question in terms of 3D. Uh, we, we didn't talk about AI and ML, but I'm happy to answer any question in terms of AI and ML as well. Um, so I'll wait for a few moments if we have any questions. So again, thank you um, uh, all for joining today. Uh, um, uh, it's a 15 minute short uh, uh, webinar, but we hope you find it very useful. Um, um, next week, we will have a last session in the series, which is on DSC um, risk and competitive ad uh, advantage and we'll meet at the same time. Feel free to um, contact uh, me or Chris uh, uh, at CG if you have any questions and we'll be happy to uh, have a chat at any time. Uh, 
so again thank you everyone for joining today and we'll see you next week